So here we have to determine the value of each of them. So let's begin with the first one, which is i raised to the power of 135. So we can rewrite 135 as 4 times 33, which is 132, plus 3. So that gives us 135. Now we separate it. So we'll have i times 4 times 33 times i raised to the power of 3. Now i raised to the power of 4 times 33 can be rewritten as i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 33 times i cubed. The reason why I have done it like this because i raised to the power of 4 is 1 and it becomes simplified and the value of i cube is i squared times i. i is i squared is negative 1 so we have i cube is equals to negative i. So the final value will be equals to 1 times negative i which gives us negative i. In the next part we need to find the value of i raised to the power of 19. So we'll try to write 19 as 4 times 4 which is 16 and the remainder will be 3. So we'll have i times 4, i raised to the power of 4 times 4 all multiplied by i cubed. So i raised to the power of 4 all raised to the power of 4 times i cubed. Now similarly i raised to the power of 4 will be 1 raised to the power of 4 times i cubed which will be negative i and the answer will be negative i. In the third part, we have i raised to the power of negative 999. Although we have done this question in the previous lecture, I'm going to do this in a slightly different way this time. So, we can rewrite it as 1 over i raised to the power of 999. Now, now we're going to replace 1 by some value of i in such a way that it, will be, it becomes easier to factor out the so i 900 i raised to the power of 999 present in the denominator so we'll consider a number which is a multiple of 4 and also it is closer to 999 so we have if we consider the number 1000 we know that 1000 is divisible by 4 we can say that uh, the multiple of 4 includes 1000 so we're replacing add by 1 by i raised to the power of 1000 and divided by i raised to the power of 999. So that gives us i raised to the power of 1000 minus 999, which will be simply equals to i raised to the power of 1, and that is the value. Now coming to the next one, we have i raised to the power of 457. So where we can rewrite it as i raised to the power of 4 times 114 and that gives us 456 and the remainder will be 1. So this can be written as i time i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 114 times i raised to the power of 1. So we have i raised to the power of 4 is 1. 1 raised to the power of 114 will be 1 multiplied to i and the final answer will be i. So in this question we need to find the value of i raised to the power of 528. Now 528 is a multiple of 4. We have 4 times 132 gives us 528. So we have i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 132 and we know that i raised to the power of 4 is 1. So we have 1 raised to the power of 132 and that gives us the value of 1. So let's begin with the first question. We have i raised to the power of 30 plus i raised to the power of 40 plus i raised to the power of 60. So we begin with the first term. So i raised to the power of 30 can be written as i raised to the power of 28 plus 2 plus i raised to the power of 40 will be simply i raised to the power of 4 raised to the power of 10 plus the third term which will be i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 15. 
Now the first term can be written as i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 7. So that gives us i raised to the power of 28 times i squared plus i raised to the power of 4 is 1 raised to the power of 10 plus the third term will be 1 raised to the power of 15. Now we have i to the power of 4 is 1, 1 raised to the power of 7 will be simply 1. So we have 1 multiplied to i squared which is negative 1 plus i ra 1 raised to the power of 10 is going to be 1 plus 1 raised to the power of 15 is also 1. So we have negative 1 plus 1 plus 1 and the final answer will be equals to positive 1. In the second part we have i raised to the power of 49 so we can rewrite it as i raised to the power 48 plus 1 since 48 is a multiple of 4 so 49 divided by 4 will leave a remainder of 1 plus i raised to the power of 68 so that is for uh, we have 60, 64, yeah, we have 64 plus 68, oh, uh, 68 is a multiple of 4, 4 times, let me quickly check, so we have 68 divided by 4, 4 times 1 is 4, ah, 4 times 7, oh yeah, so that is 4 times 17, so we can, we already have a multiple of 4 here so this can be written as 4 times 17 plus 89 can be written as i raised to the power of 88 plus 1 because 88 is a multiple of 4 and the final one is i raised to the power of 108 plus 2 so this gives us i raised to the power of 48 times i raised to the power of 1 plus i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 17 plus i raised to the power of 88 times i raised to the power of 1 plus i raised to the power of 108 times i squared so i raised to the power of 48 is simply going to be 1 since it's a multiple of 4 so we are left with only i in the first term and then we have i raised to the power 4 which is 1 1 raised to the power 17 is going to give us 1 in the second term for the third term we have i raised to the power of 88 which is going to be 1 so we have 1 multiplied to i plus i raised to the power 108 108 is a multiple of 4 so the entire value is going to be 1 times i squared which is negative 1 so we have i plus 1 plus i minus 1 and that gives us the final value to be equals to twice of i let's go to the third one so in the third one we have i raised to the power of 30 so i raised to the power of 30 will be simply i raised to the power of 28 times i squared plus i raised to the power of 80 will be simply i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 20 plus 120 being a multiple of 4 we can write it as i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power 30 so for the first term i raised to the power 28 28 being a multiple of 4 so we have 1 multiplied to i squared which is negative 1 then i raised to the power of 4 is 1 1 raised to the power of 20 will give us 1 and the final one is also going to be 1 raised to the power of 30, which is simply 1. So now we have negative 1 plus 1 plus 1. And the final answer is equals to 1. So in the first part, we have to find the value of i raised to the power of 528. So 528 can be written as i raised to the power of 4 whole raised to the power of 132 because uh, 528 is a multiple of 4 and we know that the value of i raised to the power of 4 is 1 so we have 1 raised to the power of 132 and that gives us the value 1 
In the second part, we have i plus i squared plus i cube plus i time i raised to the power of 4. So let's find the value term by term. We have for the first term i plus second term is i squared which is negative 1 plus i cube. The value of i cube is i squared times i which gives us minus of i as i squared is equals to negative 1. So we have negative i plus i raised to the power of 4 which is simply 1. So that gives us i minus 1 minus i plus 1. Now all the terms cancel out and that leaves us with 0. In the third part, we have i raised to the power of 5 plus i raised to the power of 10 plus i raised to the power of 15. So i raised to the power of 4 can be written as i raised to the power of 4 times i. I raised for the second term, we have i raised to the power of 10, which can be written as i raised to the power of 8 times i squared plus i raised to the power of 15, which will be i raised to the power of 12 times i raised to the power of 3. And we know that i raised to the power of 4 is 1. So we have 1 multiplied to i. i raised to the power of 8 will be also equals to 1 because 8 is a multiple of 4. So we have 1 multiplied to i squared, which is negative 1 plus i raised to the power of 12 which will be equals to 1 as uh, 12 is a multiple of 4 so we have 1 multiplied to i cube which is negative i so that gives us i minus 1 minus i so i and negative i cancels out and that leaves us with negative 1 now in the fourth part we have a gp series so it's a GP series. So the first term will be the first term is equals to A, which is equals to 1. The common ratio, the common ratio R, which can be obtained by dividing the second term by the first term or the fourth term by the second term gives us i squared so the i squared value is negative 1 so we have common ratio r is equals to negative 1 then the number of terms if we count it so we'll find that the number of terms n will be equals to 11 since the first term is 1 so we'll have 11 terms and we are considering all the even terms so there will be 10 terms and considering the first term so there will be 11 terms now we know that the formula for the sum up to nth term for a GP series is given by a times the common ratio raised to the power of number of terms minus 1 divided by common ratio minus 1. So we have to find out the value of S11 which is equals to 1 multiplied to negative 1 raised to the power of 11 minus 1 divided by negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 raised to the power of 11 is simply negative 1 minus 1 divided by negative 2. So that gives us negative 2 over negative 2 and the final value is equals to 1.